Look at that, guys. Well, it keeps trying to turn into a spectacularly gorgeous Saturday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and everything else. A little cloud back over, but I do think the sun will be coming out over the collapse here shortly on this soon to be lovely Saturday, August 26, 2023. And, uh, I am sitting here getting ready for the deluge of vacation tourists coming through Bugs in a Jar Farm this weekend, uh, which might or might not have something to do with. I am sitting here enjoying my planet saving cup of organic coffee, thinking about clueless morons and overshoot clueless morons and overshoot so uh <laughs> had a comment today from this fellow this new uh one of the new main commentators on collapse chronicles this fellow named uh I guess it's a fellow, I don't know for sure, named Tree Frog. And I really appreciate Tree Frog's usually intelligent comments, but uh, having a battle of semantics. Uh, so apparently Tree Frog, he's fairly, I don't know how new he is to the Doomosphere, but he's fairly new at least to Collapse Chronicles. Is quibbling I think that was his word, quibbling over the semantics of the word moron. Yeah, I think he does agree with me that I don't know why he was limiting this to Americans. Uh, for some reason, he was limiting his comment to Americans. Did agree or generally clueless. Or generally clueless. Uh, but he draws the line at morons. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> and so I, I beg to differ. I quibbled back to Tree Frog. Went over there to dictionary.com. I don't have my computer in front of me, but it was basically <clears throat> said it was either a a stupid person or <coughs> or. <clears throat> Someone who fails to use good judgment. A stupid person or someone who fails to use good judgment. And again, I have no idea why Tree Frog is limiting this to Americans or thinks I am. <clears throat> since virtually 100% of humans on the planet fall into one side or the other of that definition. As I said to Book Hermit, anybody who owns any sort of fossil fuel powered machinery, anybody who uses electricity, anybody who uses meat, and of course the king of the hill, anybody uh, clueless enough to breed is a is someone if not an outright just stupid person uh, certainly is failing to use good judgment so as far as I can tell 100% of humans on the planet are <coughs> are clueless morons now, there is the other definition, the more uh, limited Doomer definition. I think I mentioned this in my soft white underbelly. Um, the more narrow definition of a clueless moron from a Doomer is, is basically a, a, anybody who has the same information available to them 
such as William Reese's newest uh, <laughs> newest essay um, in the books I don't know overshoot and limits to growth and 500 other books uh, anybody on this planet who has the same information available to them that doomers have to us studies the information for about one hour and comes away thinking that humans are going to turn this freight train around and thinks that we are not doomed is a clueless moron. They are a stupid person and or they are failing to use good judgment. They are unable to assimilate now, good Lord, minimally 50 years of historical research playing itself out. So that is the, uh, the <clears throat> but that's just the, you know, the doomer definition. But of course, doomers, like anybody else, every one of us is a clueless moron. I would say, actually, it's uh, doomers are not so much clueless, but any doomer who gets a clue that we are doomed and then goes right on acting, you know, like any other uh, clueless m moron is in some ways a bigger moron than clueless morons. Doomers, we hold a special place in being morons. That even when we get a clue, we're still stupid people who exercise bad judgment. Obviously, breeding being the number one bad judgment. So anyway, that is uh, my amplification and clarification on the quibbling semantics of morons. And uh, a little bit more quibbling is with this fellow who is not, obviously, I think he told us Colony of Cells, what did you say recently you shared with us? You have a 97 IQ. So, I don't know. <coughs> Reading uh, Colony of Cells, uh, and this man, obviously, is the number one commentator on, uh, on Collapse Chronicles. Never met this man. <coughs> Colony of Cells... But, uh, you know, he has a mixed track record of, uh, when he is correct, he's kind of pointing out the obvious, but when he, it's just when he gets into his braying his ignorance mode, and the one <clears throat> that got to me recently was, again, I don't have my computer, so Colony, I'm somewhat paraphrasing here, but, you know, is I'm pretty sure it was a comment as part of, uh, you know, to William Reese's recent at five part <coughs> essay that I, <coughs> that I read, and I'm pretty sure <coughs> That colony of cells said overshoot is perfectly normal and leads to the extinction of species all the time. And that uh, according to colony of cells, and 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 if and, and if I'm misquoting you, brother, I am sorry, uh, but I don't think I am. Uh, I I do think colony of cells believes. Uh, although he did redeem himself somewhat, uh, 
yesterday when he at least recognized negative feedbacks, uh, <laughs> which we'll get to in a minute. But the comment that overshoot is perfectly normal in, in a species, and that species go extinct all the time because they overshoot their carrying capacity. Well, uh, I had never heard of, I was not aware of one single species in the history of the planet that has gone extinct, meaning gone to a population of zero due to overshooting their <clears throat> carrying capacity. Uh, I mean, I honestly didn't know, so uh, I phrased the question. Of course, I went on a good old Google. I don't know how to go on to chat GB. I don't know how to do that chat AI stuff, so I'm still dealing with the old-fashioned Google, and I phrased the question at least five different ways. Has there ever been an example in the history of planet Earth that a species has driven itself to extinction because it overshot its carrying capacity? I cannot find one example in the history of the planet of a species going extinct because of overshoot. Uh, so if humans do manage to drive ourselves to extinction uh, because of overshoot, I, I think we will be the first. But for any clueless moron to get out here and bray their ignorance without doing one minute of research, making the ignorant, absurd claim that species driving themselves to extinction because they overshot their uh, carrying capacity, you know, it's just a sign that you're a clueless moron, that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I can't find one example of it ever happening in the history of the planet. Uh, now, there's two things, well, three things, obviously, that, that, that we'll get to on this. Now, it is a, a absolutely no-shit Sherlock statement uh, to say that it is the natural order of clueless moron species. Uh, humans, we're not the only clueless moron species. Pretty much every species on the planet are a bunch of clueless morons. Obviously, uh, driven mainly by the biological urge to reproduce, I do not argue on any level that uh, species will do everything they can to maximize their numbers uh, in, in, in an ecosystem. I mean, it's the, the it's just the, the, the uh, it, it's what animals do uh, is they try to, you know, dominate every square inch. There's somebody, uh, oh boy, in the middle of this rant. Hopefully people can't hear me. So humans, uh, well, e every animal uh, does everything in its power to try to go in, in, into overshoot. Uh, but they fail because of uh, <clears throat> negative feedbacks, which at least Colin ESL, as I say, redeemed himself. Uh, the, <clears throat> the difference between humans and every other clueless moron animal on the planet doing everything in its power to go into overshoot is that nature has developed these things called negative feedbacks.
is called a system of checks and balances to keep these uh, animals from going into overshoot and driving themselves extinct. And this is what humans uh, have managed like no other species in the history of the planet, as far as I can tell, to, uh, to, you know, override the negative feedbacks that should be keeping our population in balance. So then this is what you have, is the population boom and bust. <clears throat> so it's very easy to find examples of animals, and of course now including humans, going through the cyclical uh, population boom and bust, uh, where for a temporary, for a very temporary time they latch on to some sort of uh, free ride, uh, some sort of food energy source that allows them to get out of balance with their ecosystem. And so their population goes and, and they exceed their carrying capacity and then the negative feedbacks, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, probably 10 or 12 uh, and Horseman of the Apocalypse kicks in and they get knocked back down within, you know, below or within their carrying capacity. And they start the cycle over again uh, as soon as they manage to latch on to this next uh, energy, you know, cheap, abundant energy source, temporary cheap, abundant energy source, but they do not go extinct because of overshoot. Uh, you know, whenever you read, the, get very far into this thing, you, you know, they, they keep talking about some damn reindeer on an island. Or, or, or something like that. Uh, so what, what, is, what is, there is nothing on any level. Well, okay, there, there's two things that I'll agree with, uh, with colony of cells. What's normal about what humans are doing is we're doing we're just following our, what, what he would call our, our robot programming to do what any other clueless moron animal on the planet does. Uh, we are f following that directive to do, and, and uh, we are, I think Colony of Cells will agree, that we are headed into a population bust as, as anybody who studies this for more than 10 minutes will come up with. But what is in no way, shape, or form normal about this is our ability so far to hold off the negative feedbacks otherwise known as the limits to growth that we uh, as clever apes so far have figured it out <clears throat> but the the jig is up and the question being uh, of course is will the population bust take us down back within the carrying capacity um, or will it take us to zero and uh, so that's the big question 
and I am uh, as much as I wish it would take us down to zero. It ain't going to happen. It's going to the end of this bust. We are going to, you know, when we come through the bottleneck, the other side of the bottleneck, uh, I'm going to take a wild guess that the global population of this planet uh, is going to be somewhere around 1 billion or below for, what, 250,000, 300,000 years, the, popul the global population of Homo sapiens was under 1 billion. In the last 200 years, it has gone from 1 billion to over 8 billion over eightfold, 250,000 years under 1 billion, 200 years over 1 billion, now over 8 billion, you know, it doesn't uh, take a real mathematician to, you know, plotting our numbers against, uh, plotting our numbers against most of these reindeer on the island, it seems obvious to me where we're heading. Uh, and it will be a much better planet for it. Uh, but of course, the big question is, in, in the middle of our suicidal romp uh, across the planet, are we going to create conditions in the process of overshooting our carrying capacity, are we going to set in motions conditions that are going to make life uninhabitable for humans? And uh, this is the big unknown. Uh, and obviously I need to always add any clueless moron who thinks that humans are going to be extinct by 2026, 2030, or 2050 it, 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 are, are so completely, abysmally, clueless, stupid morons, you know, I just, if anyone believes that, would you just please unsubscribe from this channel? Uh, the the level of, of of ignorance and cluelessness exhibited by anybody thinking that humans are going to be extinct by 2050, uh, it 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 insults my intelligence. Uh, it gives doomers a bad name. Uh, you are reprehensibly moronic if you believe that humans are going to be extinct uh, in the next 30 years. But of course, the, the big story in all of this, <clears throat> which Colony of Cells, maybe, I don't know, maybe Colony of Cells has not considered this, what the important <clears throat> abnormal thing uh, about us going into overshoot is us taking down uh, every other species of earthling we share this planet with bigger than a mouse uh, on our way out. This is the Im Im important thing. Uh, any species that humans have taken out so far and will take out before our own population bust did not die of overshooting their carrying capacity. They died and will die from the negative feedback of sharing the planet with humans. Make no mistake about this, people. The single biggest negative feedback uh, facing every other species of Earthling 
humans share this planet with is humans. We are the single biggest negative feedback facing life on this planet since that asteroid slammed uh, in, into the planet. Uh, the, the king of the negative feedbacks. Uh, any species that died due to that uh, due to that asteroid did not die of overshooting their <coughs> carrying capacity. The dinosaurs did not overshoot their carrying capacity. They had a little negative feedback called an asteroid and now uh, every single earthling we share this planet with uh, has this uh, the biggest negative feedback since that asteroid called humans. And, and, and this is the, uh, the absolute tragedy of this. Uh, I don't know if there's one example. I think maybe if you go back a couple of billion years, there's something about where these clueless morons, such as Colony of Cells, will mention, well, two billion years ago, these things came along that uh, produced oxygen and took out every other species of earthling. So yeah, uh, so it's because two billion years ago there was this negative feedback loop of these oxygen producers, whatever they're called. Uh, two billion years, so this is as far as I know, uh, with my limited education, any population ecology, that this is the first time in, since that happened, that one species, one species, is uh, going to be responsible for the you know, the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. Um, and, and, and this is the sheer tragedy. There is nothing, nothing on any level normal about what uh, humans are doing to this planet. It, 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 it hasn't happened in a couple of billion years. And, uh, it's a, it, it is the single biggest abnormal uh, event on this planet since the oxygen producers got here. Uh, certainly since the, uh, since that asteroid. Uh, this, this, a story like this comes around every, what, 65 million years or so. We, we have a story like this. And, 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 and for these ignorant, clueless morons coming on here and, and saying this is perfectly normal. It's not a goddamn thing normal about it. Now, is this going to be a one-off? <coughs> you know, this is where Book Hermit uh, is arguing with William Reese. Um, and, and, and I honestly don't know. Uh, nobody knows whether humans are going to repeat this. That after we come through this bottleneck and we have this massive die-off to get us back within our carrying capacity, William Reese is claiming it's never going to happen again, and Book Hermit is claiming he doesn't, it most certainly is, it is possible for it to happen again. As long as 
two humans uh, or come out of the bottleneck uh, that uh, in 300,000 years from now we can do this all over again. The one-off that is going on right now that we need to be talking about is the one-off of the negative feedback that that humans are creating for every one of our fellow earthlings they're not coming back <clears throat> okay they're not coming back every species that humans uh, obliterate off the species off the face of this planet uh, is not coming back. This event is a one-off for them. And, and, and this is the tragedy of it all. Uh, that is the one-off that is unfolding for thousands, if not millions, of species uh, on this planet. Certainly, uh, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. The the vertebrate, the vertebrates. The you know what we're talking about. Uh, and this is why humans are the single biggest clueless morons in the history of this planet. We know exactly what we're doing, as Bill Reese says. We know exactly what we're doing. Uh, well, a, a, a tiny, tiny few people a tiny few people know exactly what we're doing uh, to uh, ourselves, to our fellow Earthlings in this planet. And uh, even those tiny few number of people are continuing to press the pedal to the metal. Uh, full knowledge. Full knowledge. Which is why Doomers uh, are, are the single biggest morons on this planet because we're not clueless. It is the non-clueless morons. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> get out there and enjoy being the single biggest negative feedback uh, that this planet has seen since an asteroid took out the dinosaurs. And before you bray your ignorance all over this comment page and insult my intelligence and the intelligence of <clears throat> anybody with a brain, do about two minutes of research on Google before you start talking about what is normal. There is nothing normal anymore. We are living in the age of abnormal. AB normal. And with that, I have come to the bottom of my planet-saving organic cup of coffee. And I have to get this tiny house ready for uh, this couple coming to attend a wedding. So, this weekend we have one couple celebrating their 10th wedding anniversary. <clears throat> we have another couple celebrating their first wedding anniversary. One year. This nice young couple. And this third couple, I don't know how long they've been married. They are <coughs> heading to a wedding. Oh, Jesus. I'm 
off to clean up, to change the sheets in a tiny house. It's what I do. My guys.